I've been thinking about the soul, or the mind, whatever that spark is that makes someone who they are. I mean, I used to believe, better or worse, that I was my own man. No one else could figure out what it was to see out my eyes. But I don't think that no more. Some time ago, I was in the worst slump of my life. No job, no girl, drinking, angry, lashing out. I mean, I had a, a lot of hate to put about. Some days I'd hop on a bus a while, slide tinny in my pocket, top deck, spend a rainy Sunday staring at hundreds of faces, trying to figure out what their lives were, what they earned, who they screwed, were they happy? Mostly I'd just be staring at the girls. There was this one time, I saw this guy leaving his office sharp suit, haircut, fixed teeth, the whole bit. And at a glance, he had it all. And for him, everything went right. While for me, it went left. I couldn't picture the life he must have had. I mean, the charm of it, all the look that he had. And at that, he looked up. And I saw him clear. Bastard had my face, didn't he? I, I, I mean, clean shaven, thinner, sure, but my face. You'd have thought we were twins at best, brothers at worst, and once the shock of it wore off, I looked at him with the greatest hate I'd ever felt. Right from my bold kelp belly it came. I mean, this unknown anger overcame me, and it was as if he felt it. And he glanced across, and we locked eyes for as long as that bus went by. And he looked afraid. I got back to my da damp flat, in a rage, straight into the scotch, punching the wall, shouting fists, fists through the mirror, putting blood all over the sink. Ah! I mean, come on in, I was a man obsessed. I had to know who it was! All I knew was his office. I mean, he spent, he spent online, made some calls. Damn, I had his name. And with that, a dozen new nightmares. Nightmares, wedding photos, holidays, a house with a balcony, hardwood floors, sun slick beaches with his wife and kid. I mean, may as well, I may as well have been the life of a Martian. But the floors weren't enough. And I started to follow him to know his routine, his haunts, and bit by bit start to pick up on his habits. At first, you know, just to, to blend in, you know, his wine bars, French restaurants, but it got to be that, you know, I, I like the feel of a shirt, and, and clean shave, and hell, I even start to learn me on wines. Some nights, I'd walk past his house, and stare through the bay windows into the warm glow of it all, as I'd sit to dinner with his wife and son, I mean, it's a strange feeling to stare into the life you want, but you have to turn away and walk off into the dark. One night, I was sat in my car, watching the house. I mean, at first, the light came onto the patio and I watched the sun start to rise, and he, he, he was smoking a cigarette. I mean, that's strange. I mean, I've never seen him smoke before. And after that, he drove off. The family was still asleep. And I wasn't sure what was going on. I mean, this wasn't his usual Sunday, his sh Sunday route. I mean, usually it was a walk to the park and a, and a big roast in the evening. I mean, not skulking off on his own. So I followed. We drove a while. Me and me beat up Peugeot, trailing his Beamer, straight out of town right into the countryside. And as time went on, the route started to take on a, a, a sick sense of knowing it was a drive I, I'd done a thousand times. And he was heading for a, a little valley by the coast to the sleepy little village where I grew up. 
I mean, the, 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 the bastard was heading for my town. My hometown, I mean, did he even know that I was watching him this whole time? Was this some sick game he was playing to mess with my head? Well, we'll see about that. So I parked up on the lip of the valley. I mean, the village was still asleep, everyone was still asleep. I got out of the car, and I walked towards the meadows. Hopping over the flint walls, I mean, the sun was up now, but, but low, turning the long grass gold. And I followed along, and as I got into the village below, I mean, I, I didn't know how to close to, how close to get, but it, he never once looked behind. We went through the square, all the little shops and pubs, still quiet and dark, past my old school, past the house I grew up in, and then finally, up to the wood, on the far edge of town. I mean, it's that special hidden place me and the mates run around all summer. Oh, fuck. And by then I'd lost him. I mean, overgrowth was too thick for me to keep in sight with him, so I crept through the trails just as I remembered them. I mean, no one else could know these tight trails. I mean, the trails that I did. And then... There he was. Standing on the edge of a gully. Same clearing we always went to as kids. Staring out over the dense scrubland as the sun was falling and this felt like the worst of it. He'd come to the one place that I'd been happy and these weren't his memories, they were mine. Did he want everything from me? And I saw red and then I saw this fist-sized flint right by me with a wicked edge on it. And the next moment, I swear, I swear it felt like a dream. I mean, I was closing to him from distance. I mean, I got closer and closer, and I picked up this flint and I cracked his head in! Again and again and again, and I cracked his skull! And just like that, the man that I'd spent months obsessing over, that man I'd spent months obsessing over, was gone. And all that was left was this lifeless wreck in front of me. And the wind dry right through the leaves. I mean, it took a while. Dragging the body, the body back through the woods. But, you know, I got back there fair enough. And I fit him in well. Snug in the boot of my car. fenced off to all but not to me and this is where I, you know I'd come to smoke fags you know store me old man's beers and stuff and I knew I would get in and I backed the car off the cliff edge and it sailed through the air till it seemed like it blew up the whole forest and with the crash it hit the water and I watched it I watched it bubble up and it was sinking, sinking further and further down, less and less and less, till the water was still, was still, still, still like glass. Like nothing had happened there in years. I left different from how I'd arrived. I mean, <laughs> this BMW felt smooth along the roads. His suit crisp against my skin. But where to go? Uh, not back to my damn little Betsy, that's for sure. No, 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 why not? He's, uh, he's lovely semi-detached. I mean, how could I not? I, I mean, leave a life like that to wait. She'd have thought we were twins to see us. But now, not just that, now, I had his walk, his talk. I mean, cupping his hand when he was nervous, pulling up his trousers in to sit down. So, I walked through the front door. Bold as brass. His family. My family. Well, they took me for him the moment that I had arrived. And I was finally happy. Drinking his wine, raising his kid, sleeping in his bed with his wife. I mean, his life fit me well. My life! And it came to be I forgot who I used to be. Distant memory, not worth keeping. Until one day, one day I'm 
leaving my office. And I watch a, I watch a bus drive past. And on the top deck was a man staring right at me. I've been dreaming, I've been driving since dawn. But my hometown's close now. And there's a, ble a beat up Peugeot in my rear view mirror the whole way. And I gotta wonder how many rusted cars were at the bottom of that toxic lake, like eggs out of the nest. <laughs>